I'm here on behalf of Hegwist and Eck LLP, uh, who are the attorneys for Desiree Horton. We are so glad to have you with us today. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, we are going to try to be very uh, respectful of your schedules and keep this to about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, obviously, and this is not everyone's, everyone's done Zoom before, this is not your first rodeo, but when you're not speaking or if you're just here watching, we ask that you please mute um, so we don't get any background noise. We will be recording this. So we're recording is in process. Um, and so we're happy to share that link with you uh, once the press conference is over, if you need it to aid in your reporting. We're going to be um, reserving some time at the very end for questions from members of the press. If you'd like to ask your question uh, live, you can also send it in the chat. And of course, if you have any follow-up questions, you can feel free to contact me directly. That's holly at amayapr.com. Uh, so without further ado, we're gonna get started. Um, I'm gonna kick it over to Jenna Ronhall, who's from Hickwistanak LLP. She's gonna give us a little overview of the case. Jenna, take it away. All right, thank you, Holly, and thank you everyone for joining us today. <clears throat> Less than 7% of the approximately 100,000 licensed commercial pilots in the United States are women. Even less are licensed commercial helicopter pilots. Desiree Horton is one of them. Desiree dreamt of flying from a young age, and during her 30 year career, she became the first female fire pilot permanently employed by a California government agency the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, which is California's largest fire department and the third largest in the United States. While at Cal Fire, Desiree worked on some of the worst wildfires in California history, including fighting fires as a relief pilot for the Orange County Fire Authority. It was during one of these wildfires that Desiree flew with a veteran OCFA battalion chief who was so impressed with her competence, safety, and professionalism that he recommended her numerous times to the OCFA's helicopter program, known as air operations. But each time he recommended Desiree, he got the same response. She will never work at the OCFA. It wasn't until the OCFA got a new fire chief, Brian Fennessy, that Desiree was hired as the OCFA's first female fire pilot in 2019. At the time, Desiree had been a helicopter pilot longer than air operations had been in existence. With nearly 30 years of experience as a helicopter pilot, over 9,000 hours of helicopter flight time, and 15 years of aerial firefighting experience, Desiree had more experience than any of her male colleagues at the OCFA, some of whom had no firefighting experience when they were hired. Desiree was excited for the opportunity, but nervous because she was not only giving up a great career at Cal Fire, she had also been warned that the OCFA was a boys club where women were not wanted but Desiree was confident in her skills and experience and was determined to overcome adversity, just as, she, just as she had done in the past. But others at the OCFA made sure Desiree's opportunity was short-lived. And they were able to do this in part because the OCFA's air operations lacks transparency, standardization, and documentation in its training and evaluation of probationary fire pilots. Instead of having training manuals that clearly identify the objective metrics a pilot is required to achieve to pass probation, the OCFA used a subjective ad hoc approach, which a third party aviation risk manage management company identified as a latent system error that was replete with opportunity for abuse. And because there was no objective metrics that could be applied equally to all fire pilots, the OCFA was able to hold Desiree to higher standards than the men and to terminate her by wrongfully claiming her performance was substandard. During Desiree's time at the OCFA, she was unfairly scrutinized by the male pilots, crew chiefs, and helicopter technicians, held to higher standards than her male counterparts, deprived of training opportunities offered to the male fire pilots, unfairly evaluated without proper training and often with little or no advance notice before her evaluation flights, lied to about the conditions of her passing probation, and forced to work in a hostile environment in which Desiree was ignored, undermined, disparaged, and made to feel as though she was incompetent. And at the end of her one-year probation, despite passing numerous third-party and in-house flight evaluations and obtaining her instrument flight rating, which was a condition of her employment, the OCFA baselessly claimed Desiree was not good enough. 
The OCFA failed Desiree without even giving her the opportunity to take her one-year evaluation flight because it had been predetermined that she would fail. And 30, after 30 years without women, the OCFA's air operations wanted to keep it that way and took discriminatory actions against Desiree to make sure she would not be retained. Desiree was set up to fail, and by doing so, the OCFA sent a message that women are not wanted and need not apply. Desiree is a trailblazer who has risked her life countless times to save the lives and homes of Californians. All she wants is to be treated equally and to be given the opportunity to do what she loves, to fly. And it's a privilege to represent her and we look forward to advancing this case. Thanks so much, Jenna. Um, so now we're gonna hear from Alreen Hayquist, who's the managing partner of Hayquist and Eck, and she's gonna give us a little bit of context in terms of why they decided to take this case and why it matters. Thanks, Holly, and thanks, Jenna. And thank you to everyone here for showing your support for Desiree and shining light on an issue that's been in the dark for far too long. We're here because a woman who has spent the last 15 years fighting fires for Californians was fired by the OCFA because she's a woman. Women like Desiree and other minority groups have to work twice as hard to get into the same position believed to be for white men. When Desiree finally got to the OCFA, instead of showing off the fact that OCFA was able to hire someone that was so experienced, so qualified, so accomplished to join its ranks, it fired her without even giving her the opportunity to take her final evaluation flight. Surprisingly, there are male fire pilots at the Orange County Fire Authority who had no experience fighting fires when they arrived. Instead, when they arrived, OCFA trained them on how to fight fires, and it trained them on how to fight fires flying a helicopter. When Desiree arrived at the OCFA, she had both. She was already trained on how to fight fires in a helicopter. She had been doing it for the past 15 years. When Desiree started at the OCFA, she was more experienced than all of her male colleagues. She had been flying for 30 years and had been fighting fires for 15. In fact, the OCFA can't even hire anybody as qualified as Desiree Horton as that same position has been open for the past year, leaving the OCFA, as well as almost the 2 million residents it serves, with one less fire pilot in a season that's expected to be the worst yet. Now, at the time when Desiree called our office, and I heard how she had more experience than all of her male colleagues, how she had worked for Cal Fire for years, how she was OCFA's first female fire pilot in its 30 year plus history, and that it fired her after before even her one year probation ended when she met all of the stated requirements, I knew we had to take action. At the time we took on the case, I was convinced that the OCFA would realize there had been a big mistake and hire her back immediately. But it didn't. It doubled up on the discrimination and claimed she was untrainable. That was even more devastating because not only did she leave Cal Fire to come work for the OCFA, who didn't give her a chance to succeed, it was now claiming she wasn't able to adequately perform a job she had been doing for 30 years. Our firm could not allow that to happen and we had to voice the unfairness of the situation and we filed suit. We took the case because that is unacceptable. Desiree deserves more. The girls graduating high school right now who are entering the fire pilot um, cadet program, they deserve more. And the citizens of OCF uh, Orange County deserve more. If the OCFA is truly committed to a work environment free of harassment and discrimination, where employees can look forward to coming to work each day like they claim, the OCFA needs to stop paying lip service and show us how they're committed. It needs to stop allowing subjectivity in hiring and retention decisions, which only breeds further discrimination. The OCFA needs to make objective decisions based on merits and qualifications. Fires don't discriminate. 
neither should the OCFA. Thank you so much, Laureen. We're gonna to move to Desiree Horton, uh, who is gonna to talk to us a little bit about her experience and uh, why she's here. Hi, thank you, Holly, and thank you, Laureen. Um, thank you to everyone who is here to stand with me today. I am so humbled by and grateful for your support. I've been a helicopter pilot for 31 years and 16 of those I fought fires. It's a job I absolutely love. I consider it an honor and a privilege to serve Californians on the front lines of wildfires and natural disasters. And there's nothing I'd rather be doing. When I left Cal Fire in 2019 for a fire pilot job with the Orange County Fire Authority, I didn't care about being the first woman anything that wasn't on my radar. I cared about doing good work and protecting life and land across the state. I cared about flying. When the opportunity arose to work for OCFA, I went for it. I was thrilled to join them. It was my dream job. I'm an Orange County resident and I absolutely love the county I live in. It was such an honor and a privilege to serve Orange County as a first responder, but OCFA didn't see it that way. I was set up to fail and I was never given the opportunity to succeed. It was clear to me that women weren't wanted at OCFA. Making the decision to sue is obviously never one you make lightly. As a woman in an industry almost completely dominated by men, there's a real concern that you will be blacklisted and unable to work as a fire pilot again. But after what I went through, I knew I needed to tell my story in the name of transparency, accountability, and real change at the OCFA, not just for me, but for every woman who came before me and who will come after me. People have asked me why I'm doing this. The answer is simple. I want my job back. Let me fly. And I want the OCFA I go back to to be a change department, one in which women and underrepresented groups are given the fair shake we deserve. Once again, I'm so grateful for everyone's support here. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Desiree. We're going to move to Lauren Andrade, who is a current captain at the OCFA. Thank you, Holly, so much. And thank you, Aureen and Jenna, uh, for inviting me to be here. Um, my name is Lauren Andrade. I am, uh, have been a firefighter for 17 years, currently hold the rank of fire captain at Orange County Fire Authority. I wish I could sit here today and say that this is the first that I've heard of a probationary employee being discriminated against for their sex or race. But unfortunately, that's far from the truth. OCFA has a pattern of discri discrimination against underrepresented groups. Either they're weeded out in the hiring process or they're fired during their probationary year. If you're skeptical about what I'm saying, I would encourage you to check out our gender equity report for the last five to 10 years and check out our numbers of women firefighters and black firefighters specifically and compare them to other like-sized agencies in Southern California. Facts are stubborn and they, they speak volumes. OCFA currently has 20 women firefighters out of 1300. This is 2% approximately. This is far below the national average. 17 of our fire stations currently don't have women's restrooms or shower facilities to accommodate a dual gender workforce for women to actually shower while they're on duty that are code compliant with California regulations. We have no women chief officers. And up until Desiree, we had no women assigned full-time to our air operations division. However, those in charge of air operations made sure to take care of that. I'm here to say enough is enough. It's time to pull back the orange curtain and start holding people accountable. Fire pilot Horton, I commend you for your courage, for you to fight for your job back. Many people will be running away and you're willing to go back into the fire. I'm proud as an officer and more importantly, a sister in the fire service to stand by you. I'm going to end with a quote from the late poet Maya Angelou, civil rights activist, she says, you may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lauren. 
Um, now I'm going to pass over to Kalika Siegel, who is the president of the California chapter of the National Organization for Women. Thank you so much for being here, Kalika. Thank you, Holly, um, and good morning. Uh, thank you to all the women's organizations, commissions, progressive groups for coming and showing support uh, in the pursuit of justice this morning. My name is Kalika Siegel and I'm the first African-American president of the California National Organization for Women. And since 1975, we've led the charge on pay equity, eradication of violence against women and ending gender-based workplace discrimination. Today we rise in support of Desiree Horton, this well-qualified stellar pilot who was fired because she is a woman. <clears throat> we wanna thank Desiree for her bravery, um, her willingness to come forward, for filing this suit and sharing her story as far too many women could not. And I rise today for them as well and hold space that they will come forward. So let's get right to it. We know this story far too well. We know women are targeted, isolated, and shut out of the ranks in male-dominated industries like fire. I wanna remind us that workplace gender discrimination like such as this is a systemic issue, and it's gonna require systemic change, and stories like Desiree's are far too common. Today, we're calling for accountability and transparency, coupled with structural changes within Orange County Fire. We demand justice for Desiree today. We're calling to let her fly. She needs to be able to continue to do her job in protecting us as these wildfires continue to rage all throughout California. We demand an overhaul to the ways in which employees are reviewed. Objective measures must be put in place to protect women, people of color, LGBTQ, those with disabilities, and all marginalized groups. Because without transparency, the most vulnerable will never be given a fair shake. In addition to those objective measures, we must have different eyes on this. Because um, FIRE has been a good old boys club, just like the police. Covered by a veneer of hero status in the public. And much like the police, we need to pull this veneer down. FIRE often pays lift service to diversity efforts um, as evidenced by the numbers and no real changes or reform has ever really been taken on. Diversity, inclusion, equity must be intentional to bring about change. We must be intentional about the recruitment and the retention of women and people of color. I even recently learned that FIRE has been even hard pressed uh, to put in place bathrooms for women. Where's the hero status in that? We need to clean house Orange County and we are calling on women across California to drive calls and to write into Chief Brian Fennessy who has the power to correct the situation. Desiree must fly. She must fly and be given the same opportunities to succeed. We're calling on each and every one of you to stand with her, to get fired up, and to apply pressure to this sexist organization. Thank you so much, Kalika. Uh, now I'm going to pass to Robert Hawkins from Stentorians of LA City. See, okay, hi. Uh, my name is Robert Hawkins. I'm the uh, Executive Vice President for Los Angeles City Stentorians. Um, first, we wanna uh, start off by letting you know that we are in full support and solidarity with uh, Desiree Horton and her uh, accomplishments on changing the fire department, a, a issue we know well, uh, way so well. Um, a little bit about the Stentorian organization. We're very familiar with this type of behavior because uh, we too have been uh, in the fight and in the struggle to combat uh, gender and racial injustice in the fire service. Uh, there's a lot of it, there's a lot of it. And it, it goes from department to department. And uh, we now see it with uh, Orange County uh, Fire Department. 
So uh, a little bit about the Centurions organization. Uh, we were formed in 1954 by a man named Arnett Hartsfield, who uh, put together an organization of people, to, uh, groups of people to come together, firefighters, to fight racial injustice in the fire service. Uh, since our uh, 1954, we now stand for uh, recruitment, retainment, and um, and retention. And in this case, we're here in solidarity uh, for Desiree for uh, the purpose of uh, retention and and not retention, but retainment. Um, we understand that that Desiree was uh, fired and let go from Orange County Fire Department. Uh, and looking at her qualifications, she is well qualified. Uh, somebody that I, I look up to and somebody that I am inspired by, truly inspired by to be a um, uh, uh, someone different in the field of, of men and to have the accomplishments that she has is, is truly courageous because you have to be able to fight against uh, injustice. And, and to fight against injustice in the fire service is uh, something that I commend because uh, it takes a, a lot of heart to do. And I'm so glad that you're speaking out, Desiree. I'm so glad that you're coming out and you're getting people together because uh, this is truly how we change the fire service. Today, we see the fire service as one way and it needs a revamping. Right now, uh, a lot of fire departments are saying that they, um, that they tolerate diversity. We're not asking you to tolerate it. We're asking you to embrace diversity. Diversity is needed because this is what it takes to truly uh, give our, our citizens good customer service. So I want you to, to know that the Los Angeles City Stentorians African American groups, all minority groups are in are here in solidarity. In solidarity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robert. Uh, now we'll move to Ada Bersenio, who's the chair of the Orange County Democratic Party. Thank you so much, Holly. My name is Ada Briseño. I am a Democratic National Committee member and also chairwoman of the Democratic Party of Orange County. We stand in solidarity with Denise Horton and all those who've experienced the life altering impacts of gender discrimination. Uh, Desiree Horton's experience of degradation, uh, degradation and unequal treatment reveals a shameful uh, depth of gender discrimination. It's far, a far reaching problem that many women far, know far too well. As Democrats, we work to uphold our nation's promise of equality. Today, an opportunity is to create much needed change and, and it's in front of us. Um, equality starts with reversing the wrongful termination. Uh, clearly, Desiree Horton should be reinstated as a helicopter pilot. She deserves to fly, so we've got to let her fly. Equality is rooted in accountability and justice. As our community, it is our collective responsibility to end gender discrimination. We cannot root out the underlying causes of gender discrimination right now, we've got to do it. And we've got to do it with common sense measures like civilian oversight and objective job metrics. We can make sure that those who have used their power to destroy careers uh, through gender discrimination are no longer allowed to hold those positions of power. For Desiree and all women, who share, uh, who share stories much like hers. We demand nothing less. We need full accountability and transparency and we need it now. Thank you so much, Ada. All right, our final speaker before we go to open up for questions will be Stephanie Wade, who's the co-chair of Lavender Democrats and also the president of the um, Orange County Veterans Democratic Club. Stephanie. Thank you, Holly. Um, so. I'm here because the democratic organizations that I represent were built to end the kind of systemic harassment, discrimination and exclusion that is represented by this case. Um, Fire pilot uh, Horton is been the subject of some of the most brutal discrimination we can describe. Um, and we're here to demand that we let her fly, but even more so, we're here to demand the kind of sweeping accountability needed to finally make OCFA a workplace that is safe and fair for 
African Americans, LGBT, and most of all, female firefighters. Um, it hasn't been that for years. And I wanna be clear that Desiree Horton and Captain Andrade are our real heroes because they have a great personal cost to themselves. They've gone public with problems that have been buried for years under, uh, under non-disclosure agreements and through a, a policy of retaliation against anybody who speaks out of against these issues. And I wanna strongly encourage the reporters that are here to dig into the complaint um, in Desiree's case, because it details a level of harassment and discrimination that's, I mean, just bald and naked. Um, you know, there's, it's just so overwhelmingly bad. I mean, it, it, it reads more like 1921 than 2021. Um, look at how Desiree was, um, when she was hired, was held to much higher standards than male, male fire uh, pilots were hired at the same time. That's a clear indication that we're not hiring the best qualified people. And then what's more, look at how she was treated, how you know she was held to higher standards, how there was literally obstacle put into her, wet, uh, um, into her um, inner path at every turn, most particularly by you know a name, named party in this complaint by uh, senior fire pilot uh, Matasevich. Um, and look at how the people in Air Ops treated her as if she was a non-entity, how they harassed her, how people urinated on the floor in the only women's restroom, and there were men coming in to urinate on the floor in a restroom, how she was isolated and, and made to feel incompetent, even when she was more senior and more qualified than almost anybody that was flying for the fire service at that time. Um, so, you know, this is what needs to change. The people responsible at Air Ops most particularly senior flight, uh, senior, senior fire pilot Matasevich, who's named here, they need to be held accountable and disciplined, which is never happening in the fire service. That's the only way we're gonna change the mentality in a fire service where the vast majority of firefighters are tolerating and a, and a good number are active participants in gross discrimination, harassment and retaliation um, against anybody that doesn't fit their model of some kind of a country club. Our daughters, our sons deserve far better. We need to have a fair workplace, but even more, the people of Orange County need that fair workplace. We expect um, Chief uh, Fennessy to, um, to do more than hire women, but to make sure that they're treated fairly and to act in this particular case. Moreover, Shame on us if we tolerate this. Shame on any elected official who tolerates this. And shame on Chief Fennessy if he doesn't act quickly to finally take action on this issue. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Okay, I'm going to open it up for any questions that any members of the press may have um, for the next five, seven minutes or so. Again, just wanna be really respectful of everyone's time. All right, hearing none, um, you can feel free to drop me any questions that you have after the press conference to my email address, which I'm putting into the chat. Um, most of you I've been in touch with anyway, so if you need anything at all, a copy of the complaint, you wanna set up an interview with anyone who was here, please let me know, and we thank you all for your time. Have a great day. <laughs>